Dear Lord, you let the pure and innocent through your doorway, and you also offer sinners a helping hand when they need one. O Lord of the righteous and evildoers, the righteous never stop needing your grace and your love, and the evildoers, they can always hope to benefit from your mercy. So please give me a heart that is capable of loving, of loving all people, whether they are good or bad in our eyes, except those who have enmity towards you. For I cannot love them for denying you, dear God. I am in need. I ask you for your affection and your mercy. Please help me understand and be good to the poor and the needy. Mary, what were you doing near that window? Let me guess, did you go there to visit your devotees again? The people who have pinned their last hopes on the temple saintly girl? You've endeared yourself to these helpless people by feigning innocence and by being a boastful hypocrite. But you can't deceive people like me, no matter how hard you might try. I won't be tricked by the girl who wants to bring us down. Do you think all the rabbis of this temple and the elders of the Israelites will be blinded by your sorcery and your lies? Do you think they will be deceived by your seemingly innocent demeanor and your smiles? No, it is obvious that you still don't know us. Your tiny little brain is still incapable of understanding us Jewish scholars. What enmity do you have towards us? What grudges does Imran's daughters harbour against us? None. I don't hold any grudges in my heart. You're lying. Lies! Pretense! Look at me, girl! Oh, your eyes, Mary. The look in your eyes, Mary. Why do you stare at me like that? What do you want? I've been in this temple since childhood. I have chosen to deny myself all the pleasures of life and have focused on nothing but our most holy of religions. My hair has gone white and my breathing has become shallow from worshipping so intensely and reading the Torah so much. So now, why does this girl have to be known as sacred and holy? What about me? Have I not tolerated enough hardship? Have I not worshipped you enough? Oh, Mary, why do you cause me so much misery? Why do you think that you're closer to God than I am? No, I don't believe that you are truly of him and that I...
Please help me defeat this girl whose lies and sorcery are destroying our religion. And who has caused me misery? Oh God above in heaven, please reward my worship with the honor and victory of the Jewish people over all their enemies and help us succeed in destroying them once and for all. Oh dear Lord, Please give me the great honor of disgracing Mary and curing her poison. Dear God, please forgive your humble servant for any hurt she has caused, and let no one be pained by her and bestow your grace upon mankind. Forgive me, please. I have tried to do no wrong. Dear God, I know that you could punish sinners instantaneously for their wrongs against you and your followers, but instead, you give time to repent their sins. So please grant me time to seek forgiveness if I have truly wronged anyone. This is a message from your Lord above. Mary, God has chosen you and made you pure. He has made you innocent and faithful. And from among all womankind, he has chosen you to carry out a great mission which will bring him glory. Mary, obey your Lord's commands and remain ever faithful. Prostrate before him and stand to prayer, along with all his worshippers. Go and pray now.
believe they would do that. Didn't I always tell you not to ever go to Kutz? Women are forbidden from even looking at it, Mary. And you go and pass through the door and just enter the main building? Why, Mary? Why? Don't you know the laws of the temple by now? I did not want this myself, Grandfather. But I was commanded to do it. Commanded? Commanded by whom? A voice. The voice said, God has chosen you, Mary. It called me by name. It said your name? It said, Oh Mary. It said, Oh Mary. What else did it say? It said, God has chosen you out of the whole of womankind. He has chosen you for a great mission which will bring him glory. A great mission which will bring him glory. The voice said to obey my Lord, and to prostrate before him and to pray to him, to pray alongside the worshippers, to pray at the temple. It doesn't matter. That's all you have to say. You were once our great religious leader, and now you say what she did doesn't matter. That's right. If what she did doesn't matter, then you might as well tell Mary to come and lead our prayer sessions as well, for goodness sake. Yes, we have now reached a point where a girl has the audacity to enter goods. How dare she defy the temple rules? What has the world come to, rabbis? We've reached a point where pretense is preferred over piety. Woe upon you. Woe to you, for you are the master of pretense. Did piety dictate you bring a girl here? Did piety dictate you breach the law of the free? Did piety dictate a woman should come and pray alongside the men here at the temple? Why don't you just say that Jews are not competent enough to handle the Temple of Solomon themselves? Yes, any nation and race that disobeys God's will and his commands, sheds innocent blood unjustly, spreads and breeds corruption, violates the rights of the oppressed, distorts the Book of God himself, and adds new things to religion. 
loses the legitimacy to run the house of God and his holy place that is his temple of worship. So let's take a look at ourselves. Have we not done this? Oh, well, why don't we just put the religion of Aaron and Moses aside entirely and just be done with the whole thing, Zachariah? There'll be no longer any need for prayer and sacrificial ceremonies. Oh, then. he's right. As of tomorrow, we'll worship Ishtar, the goddess of Sidonians, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Moloch, the god of the Phoenicians. Or we'll take the image of the emperor to the holy temple and worship that instead. How else can we disrespect our faith? We must decide what to do with Zechariah and Mary right now. This disrespect will lead us toward blasphemy and atheism. We must decide on the final verdict in the council meeting. And make sure no one plays with religion like this ever again. This is your religion, not the religion of Moses. Your Excellencies, let me ask you a question. Can any doctrine lead to the truth without religion? Do divine revelations also manifest in the form of religious laws? Or is the truth manifested in the divine master himself? How dare you! It's religious laws that have kept Judaism alive all these years! Yes, Bruce. Bruce. yes, yes. 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 Said. We must Good point! Yes! Why yes. don't You must listen carefully, rabbis of the temple. Yes. Do you ever look inside yourselves to see how you violate the laws of Moses and his God's commandments which were passed down to guide our religion? And you have the audacity to call yourselves the guardians of his religion? What good do you do for the people apart from performing sacrifices and keeping the fire burning in the hearths? Doesn't Holy Jehovah say, I admire mercy and affection, not sacrifice. And I value wisdom and devotion, not greed or hate. But why is there no sign of mercy and affection in your hearts? Where is the wisdom in your words? God says, I hate and abhor your festivals and ceremonies, and I will not smell the essence of your sacred assemblies. He says that I will not accept the offerings and gifts which you present to me, and I am not willing to witness your many sacrifices on the altar in my name. On the contrary, I desire equality to stream like water, and justice to run like a river that never dries up, and always flows. During the forty years that you spent in the desert wandering, did you ever bring me sacrifices or other gifts or perform religious rituals? Never. We should act as role models for the Jewish people, but instead we've preoccupied ourselves with sacrificial ceremonies and other religious rituals which have many advantages. But advantages for only us. So what does God truly want from us worshippers? Have you not read the part in the holy book where he says, The fasting and worship that I admire is to cut the chains of justice and to untie the ropes of oppression. Give the people freedom and bring them faith and mercy. Have love in your hearts. Free the oppressed and give the outcast a place in your homes. Clothe the unclothed and share your wealth. Share your bread with the hungry and help your relatives. You have all read these words in the book of prophet Isaiah. So why don't you observe them? Zachariah has recited some useful verses from the Torah for us today, and from our hearts we thank him for that lovely speech. Now I too have some questions about Mary's presence in the temple, especially in Kutz, which I hope he will reply to honestly and without hesitation. Do you agree, Zachariah, that whenever the Israelites are mentioned in the Holy Book, they are referred to as the sons of Israel and never as the daughters of Israel? Is it true? If you are referring to their race and tribes which are known by their fathers, then yes, but... Do you accept that the value of a virgin girl for us is the amount that her father receives when he basically sells his daughter to her husband, and her husband has the right of complete ownership and authority over her for life? Perhaps that's true for you, yes, but for God... You should know as well as anyone that a man is allowed to have as many wives as his wealth allows. And he can purchase a maid or bedfellow from the bazaar. Yes, but to what extent? And you this know better than right. anyone else that women are forbidden from entering the courtyard of the rabbis. Also, 
that whoever enters the court will face the death penalty. You know that not only are women forbidden from attending the sacrificial ceremonies and rituals, they are forbidden to enter Kuds and to but go into the Holy Temple. That, right. that is the rule and always has been the rule, has it not? Now my question is this. Are you wholly aware of the limitations that the Jewish faith has imposed on women, or do you deny them? I'm aware. The very customs that you decide to uphold and cling to are what creates these limitations for women. But the true religion of Moses has great respect for women, in fact for everyone. You know better yourself. A man's personality is shaped by his upbringing. So you're aware of these limitations, Zachariah? Did you ask Mary to attend the prayer ceremony and enter the Holy Temple? No. I didn't give her permission to do that. So, tell me then, who allowed her to enter courts? She heard a voice that ordered her to pray alongside the worshippers in the temple. Oh, so she heard a voice. Whose voice was it? Tell me, whose voice was it? It was a revelation or divine inspiration. Revelation. Revelation. <laughs> Do you mean that God has commanded this little girl to come here? <laughs> yes. You mean God has given this little girl a divine order? Yes. 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 Oh. Oh. Oh, oh my dear Lord. Do you realize what you're saying? What exactly are you saying, Zachariah? You had better provide proof of your claims so that we can explain exactly what has happened to the Jewish people in their most holy of temples. Wait. Wait a minute, our friend. Do you believe this revelation took place, or is it just Mary's claim? Perhaps she's lying to everyone. Mary always speaks the truth, and I believe her every word. Has anyone in this gathering ever heard a lie from Mary? No. No. No one has ever heard Mary lie. She is pure. Pure and chaste. And all here know that is true. Just bear with me. I agree that Mary is well known for being honest and truthful. But does this mean that we must accept her exaggerated assertion about this revelation? Listen, I think so. You, Zachariah, an elder of the Abijah family, claim that God has revealed something to a mere teenager. Is that what you claim? Is it? She is an extraordinary human being. No man is like her, and no boy who is similar to her has ever existed. Based on divine revelations, I am telling you, that God has chosen her and her offspring. She is the only girl among the Jews who has grown up in Jerusalem. That's strange. Until now, you have always claimed that you received divine revelations, have you not? Which I admit we have been dubious about. And now you claim that Mary receives divine revelations as well. We rabbis here all know that God has never spoken to any woman in the history of our religion, not even once. No woman! Our dear Lord has always spoken to men. They have been his chosen prophets over the years, and he has appeared in the form of a burning bush or another symbol to them. Hasn't he? Don't you think that if God truly wanted to speak to anyone in this temple or give us a divine revelation, that it would be to Hillel, the high rabbi, or one of the other great rabbis that serve him so faithfully every day here? So why is it that our Lord has only spoken to Mary? The Lord knows what he's doing, Issachar. 
Oh, so you are telling us that you believe the great Lord of the Jews will command us through a mere orphan girl from now on, is that it? You mean Jehovah has suddenly preferred an orphan girl over all of us devoted worshippers here at his temple. Does this seem reasonable to you? What I That's said enough, was... that's enough. You don't need to say anything. As you can clearly see, no wise man will accept these blasphemous words from your poisonous mouth. From now on, I consider Zachariah the elder of the Abijah dynasty to be incompetent in his position. This old man is either crazy or is a liar. Or it could be that a little girl has bewitched him with her words and put him under a spell. Now I ask you, God-fearing and pious rabbis, faithful servants of Solomon's temple, do you believe this orphan girl and this old man's claims about these divine revelations? Do you believe the lies? No! 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 We can't allow it! Do you faithful agree that from now on, women should pray and worship God alongside men in this temple? Breaking with tradition? He's gone mad! This is blasphemous, I tell you! Do you agree that we must sentence Zechariah and Mary to death over their blasphemous claims and dangerous assertions that make them question the men of their religion? Should we sentence them to death for trying to tear this great religion apart? That's right, they must be punished! They must! Blasphemy cannot be allowed! Cannot be allowed, I tell you! No! No Do way! We agree? Punish them! Punish That's them. right! He deserves to be punished for his lies! They must die for their actions! I tell you, they must die! Die, I tell you! The only way they must be punished for their blasphemy, I say! Wait! Calm down! Complete blasphemy! Calm down, rabbis! Do not overreact now. This is a very heavy sentence. It must be deliberated further before passing. We will come to a decision on this matter in the next session of the council meeting that has been decided. This meeting is over. Your Honor, Hillel. Choice, Grandfather. It was a divine command. But the rabbis of the temple are in truth far from worshipping the Lord. So how come you were ordered to pray with these people? When I entered the Kuds and stood to pray behind the rabbis in our Lord's holy temple, everything that I needed to know was unveiled before my eyes. Grandfather, I saw angels standing in rows. I know they were waiting for me to enter so they could start their ceremony. Their beauty was breathtaking. They all circled around me to welcome me. All of a sudden, the atmosphere was filled with a wonderful fragrance. A stunning bright light came from the right-hand side of Kuds. And that was when I heard it. That's when I heard a voice coming from the light. It called out my name. Along with the name of three other women, that voice was so beautiful. Oh, Grandfather, the way it said those names. One of the names the angels uttered with reverence was so beautiful that hearing it made me tremble with such joy inside my body. I almost wept. Suddenly, my entire being was overflowing with love for this woman. I was so fulfilled by the source of this love that the angels standing around me spontaneously bowed before me. They actually bowed before me, Grandfather. Can you imagine it? Before me. <sighs> then they called on me just as they called on the other three women to be patient when faced with the hardships that lie ahead. And then we stood to prayer towards Kuds along with the angels at our side. Four women? You are our Lord's four chosen women of the universe. 
And that woman. Be proud of yourself, Mary. She's the greatest lady in the universe. She's the daughter of God's final messenger. You four women are the pride and joy of the inhabitants of heaven because you are the source of innocence, purity and piety. Yes. Be proud of yourself, Mary. Um, I, I'm not sure. Perhaps try up there. ruined all of my hard work, old man. I had him at the brink of death in front of every one of the rabbis. Why did you interfere? Listen now. We can't fool ourselves. He truly is God's messenger. Issachar, be fearful of God. I, for one, know that you're not worried about our religion. You've surrendered to your baser instincts. My problem is your incompetency. My problem is you ignoring the future of the Jewish people. Yesterday it was Imran. Today it's Zechariah. Tomorrow it'll probably be Mary. Oh, God! Save your chosen people from this poison! Why are you shouting, Issachar? Listen to me. The Jewish people are the most superior race on this earth. All the world's politics and wealth must be under our people's sole control. I will destroy anyone who tried to prevent that from happening. Be he a prophet or anyone else. That's my final word. I swear I will not let anyone get in my way. Do you understand? <coughs> <laughs> Dear Lord, was this the path and custom of Moses' religion? <laughs> Yes, ma'am. I know that I'm causing you trouble, Grandfather. What's going to happen? I don't know. Zachariah! Zachariah! Good news! Good news, Zachariah! Tell me, what is it, Joseph? Elizabeth! Elizabeth. Come. Come and see him. It's John. Our dear baby John. 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 Thank God. I can't thank the Lord enough for this great blessing he's bestowed upon us. This is John. He shall see and acknowledge the Savior of the Israelites. He shall bear witness.
Oh, his face is so beautiful and familiar. I feel like I've known him for years. And hello to you. You're so beautiful. All of the world's birds and creatures sing your praise, dear Lord. So I beg you to let me do the same as well. Lonely flower, you too have been touched by him, by his beauty. <laughs> <laughs> 